Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special CUBE conversation. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE here in our Palo Alto, California studios. We've got a great news conversation around the fast changing observability in AI space. Dave Donatelli, CEO of Riverbed is here in the studio. Dave, great to see you. We've got some news here. Thanks for coming in. John, great to see you as always. So first of all, you took the helm at Riverbed and you got some big news dropping, a series of, of activities, platform and a bunch of products that's going to really kind of reshape the observability space as it's evolving, certainly with Gen AI emerging. So excited to dig into that and get your perspective. But before we get into the news, what's going on with your customers around Riverbed? Give us a quick update. Sure, well, you know, our customers are, have a lot on their mind right now. They want to improve their end user experience for both their employees and their customers. Two, they're looking to simplify their environment. They want to reduce the amount of tools they have to make it easier to kind of deliver better experiences. And as you know, you can't have any conversation with that customer without talking about AI, its implications, and how Riverbed plays. And fortunately, we have solutions across that whole spectrum. One other thing I'd add is around observability specifically, is we see a lot of big organizations around the world now forming enterprise-wide efforts to look at this, whether it's for folks in the office or out of the office or frontline employees, wherever they are, around observability and improving experience for their employees. I'm excited to talk about the news you guys are announcing because we've been following your career now at Riverbed. Kind of a, I won't say stealth opportunity, but there's new changes going on with Riverbed in the news here that has really going to have an impact in the observability space, which as we know, there's a little bit of consolidation and massive change going on in how customers are using it, hence the um, enterprise-wide, because it's impacting end user applications experiences. So, so this is a, not just a point solution anymore. It's a really more of a platform thing. This is kind of the, the, the key of the industry. Give us a quick overview of the news and, and break it down and, and then we'll get into some of the impact of what's, what's the hard news. Okay, great. The hard news is we're introducing two major things today. First is an open platform that covers observability as we mentioned across the enterprise. And then from that open platform, we went ahead and it released our first set of products from there. We think it's very exciting. Uh, one of the challenges we see with customers today is that as IT continues to evolve and expand, a whole bunch of new blind spots have come out. You know, zero trust networks, now people can't see what's happening or employees working from home and maybe connecting directly to the web, not traversing corporate networks. This has presented a big challenge, right? What's going on? How do I prevent problems? How do I correct them when they happen? And that's what these products are meant to do. From a platform perspective, you know, as I mentioned, it's an open platform. And the easiest way to think about it is this. We collect a lot of data, we analyze and we act on that data through AI automation, and then we report what we did. So these simple things, collect data, analyze and action it, report on it. And what our announcement is today is that platform. Again, it's open in the sense that we also have open API, so customers can use not only Riverbed products with it, but other products they've already invested in mm -hmm. to simplify their environment. And um, we made it easier to do things like more collection. So as an example, uh, the platform we're announcing today has a single common agent. And with that common agent has modules that you can plug into within that agent. So again, that you can collect more data, you need agents to collect data. And we all know people hate agents, mm -hmm. but they also need the data, right? So the way to deal with that is have a platform that has an open agent with it, and that's what we've done. And then uh, with the automate and analyze, we bought out our second generation data store for AI. So tell me about why they hate agents and, and why this platform is relevant. You said they hate agents. Yeah. They hate agents and the fact they have too many agents or agents in general are not good. What's Explain more about that piece. You know, I think it's both technical and political. And here's what I mean by that. Technically speaking, if you go talk to a large enterprise, they have 18, 20 or more agents on, on any of their end user devices, right? Mm -hmm. Very painful to manage. You got to keep them up to date. Someone always wants a new agent. The political side of an agent is typically the person who has to load the agent isn't the person who's actually using the technology at the end. So if you go tell someone and explain a product to them, they say, that's great, I need that today. And then they say, oh man, now I got to go talk to those guys and get in the, in the queue to put an agent on. I don't have time for this, it's too hard to do. So by going to a single agent technology, we, we solve that problem for them. Give them one agent, but then that one agent can, through the modules that you can plug into, can do everything from looking at an endpoint to looking at your network, all kinds of different things. We'll get into AI agents and what that means down the road, but these agents are specifically around that network piece, getting that data coming in and out, right? Well, you know, a, cou a couple things there. First is around endpoints, like the laptop you have there. And, and then the second thing on the network side, you know, as I mentioned, traditionally in the network, people were not using endpoints to collect network data. By having an agent on the endpoint, we have a product now called NPM Plus, Network Performance Plus. This is part of our announcement today. It really brings those agents now back to endpoints in, in, with a SaaS-based deployment. 
and that's important, John, because again, you know, if you're working from home, if you're doing something in the cloud, if you're doing something, you know, a zero trust network, the traditional solutions are blind to that. They can't see it. So again, we're bringing that data in and giving people the visibility they need to manage their environment. So this is a visibility opportunity for the cust your customer. Totally. All right, explain why the open architecture is important because you mentioned that earlier. What's the open architecture and, and I'm assuming there's, a, there's an ecosystem involved in it. And, Correct. Uh, and how do you deal with say third party data? Because again, data becomes part of that. Right, so as I mentioned, we, we collect data and then we analyze and act upon it. And you know, as, as I mentioned, customers are loaded with tools. You know, one of my customers I talked to, they literally have dozens of tools trying to figure out visibility. It's too complex, it's too difficult for them to make that work. So what our platform does is consolidate a, hard, a huge number of tools you would otherwise need, but at the same time we recognize people don't want to rip and replace everything they have. So by making the platform open, we already have over 40 integrations of you know, major products you would know in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, we can leverage the customer's investments they've already made, leverage that data, because again it's the customer's data, in order for them to see their enterprise better and make better decisions. I love the unique agent aspect. It's unifying agents. You say, okay, get rid of all your other agents with the master agent, whatever you want to call it. Yes. Unified agent is kind of the, what you guys call this, right? Yeah, riverbed agent, yeah. Riverbed agent, okay. So think about how that enables AI. Take us through, uh, everyone wants to know, what's the AI strategy relative to this product? Because there's a tailwind for you that you guys walk into with this. Explain the AI impact. Okay, so the AI really gets into the, the analyze and automate part of, of, of the architecture we talked about. And about 18 months ago, we released uh, what we call a product called Riverbed IQ. And as part of today's announcement, we're releasing Riverbed IQ 2.0. So the good news is, look, we are not a PowerPoint player in AI. We actually have real products. They've been in the market. They're doing real things. And we did a lot of things that, that I'm very proud of the team. You know, first of all, as you know, good AI comes from good, accurate data, mm -hmm. right? We've already seen examples in the marketplace. If, if, you, if you're using simulated data, you can come up with some really not accurate answers. So we use real data 100% of the time, and we built this data store that can scale very high into petabytes. And why is that so important? Because I know from my background, I've been in data my entire career, it's extremely difficult for customers to build their own data repositories. There's a lot of challenges to do that, and you need the data before you can even do the AI. So we've taken all that work out of the customer. We've built that repository, it scales very high, and then from that repository, we can analyze and correlate issues and then do automated remediations. And we already pre-built into this release 170 automated re remediations for common problems you'll see in your environment. We also give customers the ability to build their own remediations. We have some customers who've built hundreds on top of this. Let me give you one example. We have a, a, major, a major company in Europe who uses our IQ product. And from that, you know, one of the big challenges they saw were false positives. So think about it, you, you see this all the time, you're on a help desk, you're getting inundated all the time, alert, alert, alert. No one knows what to work on. Using the AI, they're able to eliminate 86% of those alerts, to just ignore them. They thought at the time they are getting 2,000 alerts a day, they were actually getting 2,000 an hour. They didn't know that because they just couldn't get to them. So by eliminating all the noise, they got to the important ones and then they could automate resolution and improve customer satisfaction. So one of the things in observability people are talking about is there's so many signals to, to monitor. You mentioned, totally. you mentioned that just and how they're off by orders of magnitude. As the world gets more connected, there's going to be even more observability data points. Um, the people talk about full stack observability and then we have this wave of data coming in, more observability. Is AI going to help that? What does Riverbed's solution in this announcement address some of those things? So talk about the, the tsunami of data coming in. Right. Is that the data store co in combination with the with the engine of IQ? Or take us through that, okay, because the solution right. you're coming to look at is, okay, I got my agents there, okay, great, I got rid of that unified agent. Now I have a tsunami of s observability data points I need to monitor. Right, the, well the biggest challenge people have, as I mentioned, there are just what you said, tsunami of data, false positives, right? I've got all this stuff, noise coming at me, what do I do? I don't have enough smart people to cover all this, so I need to get down to the ones that matter the most. And that's why the AI and the IQ is so important. Because what it enables you to do is sort and correlate and figure out, is this really a problem or not? Is this something I need to worry about or not? So it's this combination of one, ending blind spots by finding new ways to collect the data that people need to see that's relevant, and then two, by using machine learning and AI to sort through all that data and then correlate and say, this is the problem. The big thing you hear from customers all the time is this term, I'm sure you hear it in here as well, mean time to innocence. 
<laughs> right? I'm the networking guy. I need to figure out, is this my problem or not? Or I'm the apps person. Is this my problem or not? Or I'm the endpoint person. What we do is we do that in an automated fashion so people aren't sitting around finger pointing all the I time. I like the correlation. Now you guys do cross domain correlation and is it everywhere yes. all across all domains? Yes. Okay, great. So that's table stakes pretty much, right, for you guys. Yeah, because, and again, it's, it's based on our background, right? We, we grew up knowing endpoints and we grew up knowing networking and we grew up knowing applications. So we can look at packets and flows and applications and, you know, again, laptops and desktops and WANs and everything else people have issues with, we can see and then correlate across. Okay, so I'm a customer, I'll put my customer hat on. You know, David, you know, I, I, I know Riverbed, I got so many problems. My biggest problem is what data do I collect and do I get all the data? So data collection becomes a really big conversation. How do you answer that question? Yeah, well, the way we answer it, and this is the great thing about our architecture, is you can start wherever you want. So we have some customers who start and say, look, I've, I've got this huge, I'll give you some real problems we face. Hey, I, I've got, um, all these problems on my endpoints. People can't log in, they're mad, they're not using their apps, we have issues. Great, we have a product called Eternity. This is part of the architecture. Go, go apply Eternity. And you know what we see with customers is a very quick ROI on that, it solves that problem. But more importantly, it's not just a point or dead end product. Then they might say, well gee, I have issues on my network. Great, add some of our network products. Add those network products together, then they say, okay, great, now I know what's going on my network, I know what's going on my endpoint, now I want to correlate across, add, add IQ. And so think of it as like Legos, right? Take the pieces you want, put them together, and then with the openness, connect the pieces that you already own into that, and that's the entire system that we're announcing today. Tell me about Riverbed's attorney mobile solution. You mentioned that. What's that targeted for? Which industries? And who benefits the most from that? Okay. Well, you know, think about it in your personal life, right? If you go anywhere today, I, I was driving down the street and they were doing some, uh, PG&E is always doing electro, you know, work in, in the neighborhood and they're out there on their endpoints, right? That's, that's a mission critical application. That's how their workers communicate, find out what they need to do and get things done. Go to any restaurant, what are people doing? They're on endpoints. Go to a hospital, your electronic medical record is done on a mobile endpoint. So these are mission critical frontline applications for all these companies, meaning if they're not working well, the company's not working well, they're not being efficient. But up until today, no one has had a solution for it. And this gets back to my point before about blind spots, gathering data and acting on that data. So what Eternity Mobile does is just that. So we cover iOS, we cover Android, we cover a broad set of devices. You can run that and now understand, am I having a problem? What's the problem? How, what should I go do to fix that problem? across very, very large scale. So that's a user experience for your customers. Totally, it's, very, it's a very important product and something all our customers are looking for. Yeah, it's a no brainer. Let's shift to AI ops. You mentioned IQ 2.0. What specifically is in that that makes that second generation work? What's the, what's the big uh, secret sauce in, in, in IQ 2.0? Yeah, what happens in 2.0 versus 1.0 is, um, it, it might sound kind of funny because we're talking about it, but it's more data sources in, more <laughs> data covering more of your environment gives you a better correlation, more accurate results. In addition to that, more pre-built automated resolutions. So we continue to build out more and more problems that we can solve without uh, human intervention. You know, we, we have customers doing literally thousands of automated fixes per month, no human intervention. We report out to either our reporter, we report that out to ServiceNow. That's the kind of technology that IQ gives you. It's very, very popular. Um, and the other thing we see, you know, around automation and intervention, one other use case we haven't really talked about are like call centers. Very, very popular with our customers right now because either you have a help desk, right? Everybody's got a help desk or, or you have a call center and the call center is either generating revenue for you, right? We're calling people to make money or you're dealing with service calls and you're trying to keep your customers happy. As you're aware, most of those aren't in an office building anymore. They're, they're at somebody's house, right? It's individuals working from their house. Well, you need to know if that's working. And everybody's house is different. Everybody's, some people have great networking, some great internet connections, some people don't. And by using that automation to understand is my call center being as efficient as it could be? Can I fix things automatically? These are all big difference makers for organizations. So you took over Riverbed as CEO. Obviously, um, they have a huge install base, yes. very big brand. I mean, at one point they were the king of-, of Still of are. Still, <laughs> okay, still <laughs> are, and probably going to be bigger in this announcement. I want to ask you specifically, to all the Riverbed customers out there. Okay, specifically, what's new 
Okay, I got my riverbed, I, it's working, it's in my environment. What should I pay attention to in this announcement? What should I know about this announcement that's gonna make me stand up and either do more or change my configuration of doing more with the riverbed and in, uh, install base? Well, for install base, look, we just made your life a lot easier. And the great news is we carry forward all the investments you've already made in our products, but now we have a SaaS based offering that you can, again, use any entry point you want and build either a piece of it or all of it in one, one point in time and covering all your new issues you face, you know, solving your problem around zero trust networks and cloud, solving your problems around mobility. It's all here and shipping today. We've interviewed on theCUBE almost a dozen, two dozen times. I think this is the 12th time you've been on theCUBE. Um, you're a product guide, and I know I can say this with certainty, you're also competitive. And so I'm sure Riverbed customers are going to benefit. I appreciate your comment there. But let's talk about the new business. Someone's not a Riverbed customer. I mean, probably everyone pretty much has a Riverbed because it's their well, product leadership's well known. But for the folks out there that aren't working with you, why is this announcement important for them? Why should they take a look at Riverbed and this particular thing? And what's your message to, to that audience? Yeah, to that audience, I'd say this. We, we have the, humbly said, we've proven in the market that we have the best technology in the marketplace. We have the best ability to manage your endpoints. We have the best ability to most accurately understand what's happening in your network. And we've built that over 20 years. And with this announcement, we're giving you an open solution that covers the, the problems that you face. You know, how do I provide a better experience? How do I deal with the complexity of IT? We have, you know, I'm a, I'm a football fan, and Tom Brady always said at the end of his career, he had the answers to the test. <laughs> and I believe we've answered the test. We know what customers want by our interaction with them. And what we've delivered today is by listening to our customers very closely, I believe we've very accurately delivered upon what they're asking for. And if you're not a customer, I'd say this, everybody will benefit from this technology. And I mean that sincerely, I don't mean that as some hype thing, right? If you're running an organization and you have all kinds of people spread out all over the world, you can benefit from this technology, give your organization a better experience, make your employees happier, and we give you a very, very fast ROI that we're happy to share with you. You mentioned earlier at the top, um, people have too many tools. People are also looking for simplification. Absolutely. You're kind of addressing that with this announcement. Um, this fatigue on products and vendors and security threats are more than ever before. Security is a big part of this observability equation. You mentioned also teams are forming enterprise wide. So we seem to be at this inflection point in an industry that you've seen all the waves of innovation. We are now at one now where it seems it's the nexus of all of them kind of combined and add a hundred factor to it. So you scope it out that way. Right. Why are we this? Why is this time important? And again, and why is this observability thing going from a point solution to an enterprise-wide uh, effort? Because you know, it's not a magic quadrant anymore. Observability is native to everything, and so this is, seems to be what you're saying. Yes, why, why? that's what attracted me to Riverbed. And and as you said, you know, I've been fortunate. I, I've been doing this uh, <laughs> probably longer than I'd like to admit, but you know, and I've seen the whole evolution of, of what's happened in enterprise. I spent my whole career in enterprise technology and, and I love it, I'm very passionate about it. And what I was really excited about Riverbed, you know, when I first looked at it, I was like, they don't know what they have here. And because there's a combination of what you said, what customers are looking for and what they need and what the technology is. And you can't do this stuff in five minutes. They've been at it 20 years and the largest, most critical applications in the world, knowing how to scale to great heights, because remember, these things scale very, very large. You got to be able to scale in order to, to really meet customers' needs. And so that combination of where the market is and what it needs and what Riverbed had for fundamental technologies has all come together in what we announced today, and I think it's going to make a big difference. You know, you've always been a product-led executive. Um, yeah, you like product, and, and like you said, Love you're it. technical. Um, Customers need to simplify their product portfolio as they install their own technology. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give them as they look at this next wave of re-architecting for the AI world? Because that's going to change the app. And since user experience is a big part of your announcement, okay, having the blind spots filled, now you have full observability, if you will. What's that going to do for the, on the app side? And how does your customers change their behavior in terms of how they organize their teams, how they should think about their architecture, is there any advice that you would give those folks out there to think about their product architecture in terms of like, okay, I got data centers turning into AI factories, I got clustered systems now, the new server, more horsepower, they're gearing up. Right. At the same time, there's a data problem that they're solving, observability, data management, it's all changing. Everything seems to be flipping the script. What advice would you give enterprise customers now as they want to build the bridge to the future, then cross it? Yeah, I think, um 
a lot of basic things that sometimes get lost in all this, right? Always keep business impact at, at the forefront of what we're doing, right? As much as I love technology, you know, these are businesses and large governments, they have a job to do. And, and you got to always keep that in mind. What problem are we solving and how are we doing it? I think the second thing I, I keep in mind with everybody is be careful about fads and, and really look to make longer range decisions. You heard me talk about why I think the data store is so important. And the reason why I do is because I think within a lot of companies, they're going to be like, hey, we're, we're just going to go build our own. We're going to make this work. And I remind people, go back to data oceans, you know, go back to data lakes. People struggled mightily with that. And the reason why it is, it's, it's not because they're not smart. It's because it's really hard. It is much harder than people think. And, and because of that, our technology and our industry, believe it or not, I would observe, is much more evolution. If you're on the inside of it, it's much more evolutionary than revolutionary than, than people give credit for. Meaning AI is not new. Machine learning's been around for a long, long time. And people have been working on it for a long, long time. Now, because of the things you see in the consumer world, right, all of a sudden everybody wants to talk about it, it's all the rage, I get it, and I think it's gonna be hugely impactful. I, I think it's real, I'm, I'm not saying it's not real. But, you know, do some things that are tried and tested and true, and I'm a big, I'm a big believer of, you know, crawl, walk, run. Get it working, <laughs> yeah. do better, do better, always with business in mind. And I think if you follow those steps, and you work with people who've got a lot of experience around AI, yeah. you'll do fine. As Steve Jobs said, don't take technology to look for a problem. Identify what you need to do. I would say also on the evolutionary, revolutionary thing, it might feel revolutionary. I mean, I think it's a revolution. I use the word all the time, but I think from a perspective of evolution, yeah, enterprise is hard, but look at the developer market. It's rabid right now, it's on fire. Right. And there's an appetite for AI because it's stoking the developer. Great, that's applications. The infrastructure is lagging because it's hard, it's, it's not, it's you can't difficult. just flip a switch and say, okay, we're now an AI enabled. There's so much in there. So I think step one is to simplify, and step two is get the observability right, get the network right, get that done. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, if you look at it, what, what people really want is give me my consumer life and my business life. Yeah. Let me be a remote worker and let me have the same experience even I had when I was at my own yeah. office where I could just call a tech guy and everything would work. That's, that's what everybody wants. Now, the reason why it hasn't happened yet is just what you said. It's, it's challenging to get there, it, you know, it, it, it does take time. But I think the steps are in place if people are willing to step back, look at the big picture, and then implement a program that, that you know where you're going to get to at the end point, but you take very measurable steps to get there. One other thing I'd say is, you know, people are smart. And what they learned is what happened with the internet. And, and you know, we were talking about it on our launch today. 52% of the Fortune 500 from the year 2000 is gone. And a lot of that was caused by the internet, right? We had a lot of companies, we all know their names, all went away because the internet made them obsolete. We had a lot of companies who pivoted, more successful than ever, right? Established brands, but they understood the technology and they pivoted successfully, they're doing great. Then as we know, we had a whole bunch of new companies that came out of nowhere and now are huge Fortune 500 companies on their own. I wholeheartedly believe AI is going to play out the same way. And again, what I mean by businesses being smart is they saw the same movie. And all the CEOs and boards are sitting around saying, I don't want to be the first category. I want to be someone who's in the middle who's going to be more successful than ever from this. And um, you know, that's what we're building to help them do. As we say in the cube, if you're too out far front of the wave, you become driftwood. If you yeah. miss the wave, you miss the wave. You got to ride the wave, which is being pragmatic. That's the pivot. Exactly. Dave, great to have you on. Real quick bumper sticker, the news for us. What, how would you put the, the news in, in, on a bumper sticker on a car? How would you? describe the relevance and the impact of what you're announcing today. At Riverbed, we use AI to help automate the identification, the uh, resolution of any issues they have across their environment, delivering a better end user experience. Awesome, thanks for coming on theCUBE and sharing the news, congratulations. Okay, Riverbed hot news announcement here on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching theCUBE.